Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast on YouTube. Andrew Muscov here. I hope you guys are doing well. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. What a lovely morning. The morning after Newcastle United 4, Tottenham nil. And if you're a Spurs fan, oh my goodness, it happened again. I have to be honest, I didn't see it coming. I was a little bit fearful of Tottenham. Very good side but from the word go Newcastle United set the tone Spurs lacked fight they lacked organization and Newcastle United they just got the tactical game absolutely spot on and wanted the three points more it was a fantastic performance by Newcastle United felt like the Newcastle United of last season and it was them at their very best with let's be honest not a full team you know that back shift make for uh, the makeshift back four with Emil Kraft centre back Dan Byrne back at left back and Jacob Murphy at right back but they played like they've been playing together for years and they kept a very talented Spurs side very very quiet and let's say the tactical uh, setup for Medi was absolutely brilliant um I didn't think they pressed too high I, I thought they purposely let Spurs come out just a little bit to then make them nervous when on the ball and think, okay, what do we do now? Because the way Spurs like to play is they like uh, the team to get right into their faces and then they pass it around and that's how they break forward. Whereas Newcastle, I thought, just said, right, come out a little bit and let's see what you can do. And Spurs didn't like it. That's when they started getting nervous, passing it back, passing side to side. And that's when Newcastle United then applied the press a little bit more and it worked absolutely perfectly. Two goals from Alexander Isaac, a goal from Anthony Gordon and a goal from Fabian Scher absolutely brilliant a fantastic afternoon on Tyneside can we play 12.30 every week can we play Spurs at home every week and maybe Fulham as well um, absolutely brilliant and now into sixth ahead of Manchester United ahead of West Ham who play later today uh, but my United very lucky at Bournemouth to uh, to get a point and uh, I think Newcastle can easily finish up with Manchester United still got them to play they got awful. They are absolutely bang average. And if Newcastle United can finish every game, if they can play every game like they did against Tottenham Hotspur, they'll have absolutely no bother. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We did this uh, after we beat Wolves. We were back, we're back. But it was just such a good performance and you just hope Newcastle United can apply that to every last remaining game of this season. I'm going to do five quick takeaways from yesterday's game. There was a lot of talk about, but I've brought it down into what I think are five key points. So hit subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, let's get on with it. Number one, Elliot Anson looks like an absolute player. He looks a real talent and it's probably my biggest regret, my biggest, oh, why did that have to happen this season, is Elliot Anderson's injury because this was meant to be his breakthrough season and to be fair, in the games we've seen him of late since he's come back from his injury he's been absolutely superb i'm just a little bit good we didn't get to see more of him earlier in the season in the champions league picked up that injury didn't he um but he just looks brilliant absolutely brilliant he's he's strong in the challenge he's got big broad shoulders he's very very strong he's uh, good with a pass he can pick a pass like the best of them and you know he just wants to go forward he doesn't let himself get bullied I'm just waiting for a few more goals. He had a chance yesterday, which was just a really good save. But what, he just looks like an all-round player. You know, some have that defensive capability, some have the attacking capability. He looks like he's got it all. And he's only going to get better. Absolutely superb performance yesterday. Really key from him. Um, some beautiful passes. And just the want to go forward. Just the want to, to take Newcastle into Spurs' as half. And it was an absolutely brilliant performance from Elliot Arneson. Uh, take away number two, Emil Kraft, ladies and gentlemen. Emil Kraft. He is the unsung hero. You know, when he signed his extension, some people's worlds fell apart. Why are we keeping Emil Kraft at Newcastle tonight? We need to be getting rid of these players to progress and build on. Every time he steps on the pitch, he gives 100% and he put in a fantastic performance against Tottenham Hotspur. To be fair, quite a few people did, but I'm going to mention him because he gets a stick. He deserves more respect as Emil Kraft. Is he, you know, a world-class defender? No. Is he on the level of Sven Botman or Fabian Scher? No. But he is an, he's an international capped defender. He's versatile. Right back, centre back, left back. You know, he's so valuable to this side and yesterday he did what he does the best he's just a confident defender okay he might lack a little bit of pace but he can get a challenge in he can mark 
the opposition. He can go win headers and he can pick a pass. He's comfortable on the ball. Okay, he's not going to spray a pass like Fabian Cher, but he is exactly what Newcastle United need. You know, when they need calmness on the ball, when they need someone just to do what they what they need in terms of clearing the lines. He is a really good defender. Eddie Howe values him. The club value him with this contract extension. And if you show him some uh, disrespect, it's time you start showing him some respect because he deserves it. Brilliant performance yesterday. Really, really good. There was a few early challenges which I think set the tone for him. But again, he just does what he needs to do. Nothing fancy. If the ball needs to go, the ball will go. Short passes, brilliant. Wins the head as he's organised. Really, really good from Emil Kraft. And I think he does really deserve a lot more respect from some Newcastle United fans. At number three, ladies and gentlemen, Bruno Gomeresh. That little nastiness is back, isn't it? We saw it with a little 4-0 uh, to Le Salso late on in the game. And he got through. He's gotten through his 10 games that he needed to since January to avoid a two-game ban. He needed to avoid a yellow card. And he did it. He did it. And look, he's become a better player because of it, because he's had to be disciplined and he's become more focused. He's been absolutely brilliant the past 10 games. He's carried Newcastle United times and yesterday he was absolutely brilliant yet again. In the pass over the top for Isaac's uh, second was absolutely sublime. But again, you know, just getting his foot stuck in, the little passes, the long balls, he's just got a bit of tenacity about him. He's a world class player probably Newcastle's best in terms of ability on the ball. Newcastle United will want to keep them for as long as possible and when you have results like that against the top sides and Spurs are top side, they're going for Champions League football and when you play them off the park, when Newcastle United play as well as the Jesting ones and James Park is such a ferocious um, arena, that can only be a good thing in terms of persuading Bruno that at least one more year at Newcastle is the place uh, for him to be brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And an added bonus, I didn't get a yellow card. And hopefully that discipline that we've seen from him in the last 10 games where he's had to be mindful of that caution, that'll continue because, like I said, I do think he's become a better player. But another top-class performance from Bruno uh, Garamaresh. Now, number four, can someone please, for the love of God, either teach... Martin Dubravka, how to come off his line. I don't think you can teach it. If you're not confident, you're not confident. Just tell him not to do it. Just work, please, on it. Because there was a moment yesterday, he races off his line. He's not sure. You can tell he's not confident. And it goes all apart. And he's lucky that Dan Byrne was there to stop Spurs getting in on goal. Admittedly, he does wipe out uh, a player. He's maybe a little bit fortunate, Dan Byrne, on that one. But... Someone tell Martin Dubrovka, if you don't want to come off your line, son, don't, please, because you're putting Newcastle in danger. Look, Martin Dubrovka has been brilliant since he's come in, and they've put another clean shoot for him, which has done him the world of confidence. I think there was one save he had to make yesterday, which he did, um, you know, he did his job, didn't have anything to do, and given Spurs had about 7% possession, that shows you how well Newcastle managed to um, contain them with their game plan in terms of you know, stop them the shot, you know, yes, they had a lot of the ball, but they didn't do anything with it. But please, Martin Dubravka, you're giving us a heart attack, mate. You know, I don't, I don't think you can teach the whole coming off the line with confidence, but in that case, you've got to just set something up between the defence and the keeper and say, OK, we'll work on it together where Martin doesn't have to come off his line if he doesn't want to, which isn't ideal, I admit, but uh, it's better than the chaos that it creates when he does. But, yeah, I say, what do you need to do with that save he had in the second half? He did it, and uh, yeah, a clean sheet for Martin Dubravka, which is brilliant news. Um, on to the fifth point. I mean, we could talk about so, so much because there is so many positives to talk about, but let's talk about Isaac, Gordon and Barnes. They're not even a fully fit front three, and yet they performed unbelievably yesterday. Two goals for Isaac, a goal for Gordon, and Harvey Barnes played his part in the performance as well. It could have been, you know, five, six, seven nil in truth. And those three absolutely tormented that Spurs defence. They could not handle the pace of that front three. Absolutely brilliant. And I say, Harry Barnes isn't even match fit, really. I don't think anyone will argue with that. Look at the levels he's at right now. Imagine when he is up to match fit. When he gets a full pre-season uh, under his belt, doesn't pick up any injuries, and he starts next season with a full tank. He's gonna be unstoppable. And with Gordon on one wing, him on the other, 
and Isaac running through the middle. Unbelievable. I and mean, that is one of the best front threes in the Premier League. And we saw it yesterday working so well. You know, the way they were switching the ball, the way the way they were the way they were pressing, the way they were, you know, moving for each other and then picking the passes, just clinical, precise absolutely brilliant that's such an exciting front three and it's only going to get better and that's what excites you the most it's only going to get better because of the fitness because then they work together and understand each other a little bit more but what we saw yesterday oh, goodness me doesn't that whet the appetite for what's to come more of that please more of that i mean oh, it's hard to put in the words just how good they were i mean anthony gordon if he's not on that plane uh, for the Euros and Gareth Southgate, I mean Gareth Southgate needs to go anywhere, but Gareth Southgate is, is, doesn't know what he's doing. Anthony Gordon, absolutely brilliant. Yet again, you know, he just always wants to go forward with the ball. That's his main aim, get the ball and drive Newcastle United for it. And then he's clinical with it. He's, you know, he, he needs to pick a pass, he does it. If he needs to put the ball in the back of the net, he does it. It was a wonderful finish. Um, and to get onto that Spurs mistake and pop it in the back of the net. Really calm and collective as he shimmies on the defender and puts it in to the top corner. And Alexander Isaac, ladies and gentlemen, goodness me. Whew. Newcastle United, like Bruno, need to do everything they possibly can to keep him at the club because he is a central part of what they uh, need to be successful. Oh, man. Oh, just another two goals. That's 21 now this season. Absolutely delightful to watch. He's just, oh, is he the best since Alan Shearer? Well, let's let, let's not let's not give in too easily. Let's say let's do it a couple more seasons, Alexander, and then we can then we can say yes. But he's certainly in the conversation, isn't he? I mean, he's just it's just sublime. His first touch is excellent. He is clinical. He scores fantastic goals. He's brilliant outside the box. Maybe needs slight improvement, well, you know, in the six-yard box. But let's not complain about that because he does score goals, and that's what he's paid to do. Twenty-one this season. And the, uh, I mean, the first goal was was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. The way he just sends the defender, he just sells him, and he ends up on the on the floor. Uh, Spurs' best player this season ends up on the floor. He couldn't handle the way he's turns him, and then pops the ball in the back of the net. And the second goal holds his run really well. If you watch him, holds it really well. He did for the first goal as well. Keeps himself onside, like a little curved run. Second goal, Bruno over the top, brilliant first touch. And when he's bearing down on goal like that. Isn't it nice to have a striker, and we've got that with Callum Wilson as well, but isn't it nice to have a striker who runs through on goal and you are willing to bet your last pound that he's putting that into the back of the net because that's what Alexander Isaac does. Absolutely brilliant. And like I say, that front three of Barnes, Gordon and Isaac, oh, can you imagine what that's going to be like without being impacted by injuries, when they've got a full tank, after a few more games, a pre-season, and then in addition, maybe in the midfield, I mean, they've got to build their team around with that front, front three, haven't they? And Bruno, unbelievable, absolutely fantastic. We could talk about countless other things because it was such a good afternoon. Newcastle are at their very, very best. What a wonderful weekend it has been so far. The sun is out shining. That result, that performance set the tone for a wonderful weekend. Absolutely brilliant from Newcastle United. And the race for Europa League is definitely in their hands now. And uh, yeah, I'm backing them to do it. Hopefully you enjoyed the game. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on yesterday's game. Hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. And we'll see you guys very soon.